<sighs> All right. So we're going to be watching Valle Verde part three. And I don't know if you guys uh, remember the last time you watched this. It was like a long time ago. It might have been like, I'm trying to think, maybe three, no, maybe like five, five months ago, I think, since the last part. But in case you guys don't know what it is, basically, this is sort of like a, uh, it's one of those types of web series where it's based off like a game, but the game doesn't actually exist. The, uh, the game itself is fictional, but it plays out like some dude found this game somewhere like, I don't know, buried in the woods unironically. And he's like going through a playthrough of it. I believe this game, well, this is supposed to be like Spanish, but there's English subtitles in the game or inside the uh, the video. Yeah, it's sort of like Lacey's Wardrobe. A lot of a lot of stuff comes out like recently where it's like a fake game, but like the web series is based around this fake game. Like Pets Cop, sort of like Pets Cop. And this is very, very high quality. Like the quality almost looks like it could be something out of like a PS1 style like Animal Crossing game. So the premise of the game, uh, well, the premise of the web series basically is that this dude is going through all these videos uh, from the compilation of this game. And he is discovering that this game has a lot of religious undertones for, like, what is supposedly, like, an Animal Crossing-like game. And this game also, uh, supposedly has the souls of, like, these kids, yes, sort of, like, <laughs> unironically, like FNAF. But it's pretty fucking creepy. Yeah, it, you may have heard of this. I think Nightmind or Nexpo might have covered this before on their videos. And also, it starts to, like, take over, it starts to, like, generate some stuff within the game uh, that normally shouldn't even be, like, you know, possible. I think it actually unironically makes a game within itself, supposedly. I don't know, I kind of I lost track of it. I want to I wanna see if they'll maybe, like, do a recap of it, because it's been a long time since the last episode, so we'll see what happens. Hold on. The audio is not working. edge there we go the main character kind of looks like um kind of looks like ness doesn't he i guess that's kind of wait what'd that say hold on what'd that say at the start so basically whatever happens for this game is that let me go a bit smaller what happens here is that you guys can see in the bottom left the uh the title of it they're like anomalies that happen within the game this game was being studied by scientists as to like what was causing like all these irregularities and like i said there's a lot of like religious undertones in this game we don't know what's causing it but we do know that there are kids trapped in this game and whatever is happening in this game is causing like all these corruptions and all these like ai within the game itself to start generating stuff that shouldn't be possible like i said So this one says irregular NPC interaction. And I think supposedly this game was Japanese. A Japanese developer, I think. Oh. Invisible NPC? That type of texture usually means that the, the model hasn't loaded in, but you can still see the shadow for it. Wait, this is some awesome music. Oh, here again. Lose again? Oh, is that gonna be like a boss fight? Or like a Pokemon style fight? I have no idea what kind of... I have no idea what kind of style this game is kind of going for. This is the first time I actually think we get to see combat in this game. Dude, look how much effort is put into this! This is fake! This is 100% fake! This is not a real game! Wait. He's not loaded in. Uh... He's not loaded in. Oh, by the way, for context, the person playing the game 
um, I believe, is a scientist. So he's actually recording all the uh, all the anomalies. The player themselves is not the person recording it. It's like pre-recorded footage. The, a scientist is recording all like the anomalies in this and like writing it down and interacting with all the anomalies in here. What the fuck? This isn't COD. This is COD 2.0. How do we die? <laughs> oh, maybe the timer? It might have been the timer. You can't, yeah, you can't really interact with it. The model's kind of disappeared. Maybe it's like an instant kill type of thing? Dorota. I can't understand Spanish. Broke a record? We didn't even... <laughs> oh my god, he just has your dog shit. Nice. Player fucking sucks. I don't see the... What was the irregular... Oh, I guess the irregular NPC interaction was the fact that the model itself didn't load in. And it was causing like an instant loss. Anomaly XE15. Read full report. Okay, so this is gonna be some, some crazy shit. <gasps> right! I forgot too. The way that this game is played, I believe it's a brain interface. See, see this thing, th brain. That's literally like the controller. There's just too much lore with this series. It's hard to keep up. Oh. Position actual. I don't know what Ayunta Ayunta Miento means. Oh my god, look at the compass. Or is that the time? I think that's the, I think that's the timer. Or the actual uh, clock. Yeah, that's the clock. I think I remember this. This is like the underworld. Below the uh, main game. They get teleported here occasionally. That's the father from the church. Press the start button on your controller and activate it on the items menu. What the heck? I better not open it inside. Oh, 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 uh. Oh, 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 shit. Whoa, 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 what the fuck was that? Hold on, hold on. What was that? So, in the last episode, I believe, uh, the player went to a church, and the church guy, that, that father, was reciting some actual speech from, like, a, a real-life man, a real-life uh, father, a priest. But apparently, he came back and, like, told us what to do so that we wouldn't, like, fucking die, I guess. Or I guess our player guy wouldn't die. Let me go back a bit. What was that? It, like, it went past him. What the fuck? Well, I'm, oh no, he didn't go past him, but it was about to kill him, but... The, uh, I guess the cross worked. Exercised? Technically exercised them? We did it, nice. Well, I mean, he did it. But we're watching, so we're basically living vicariously through him. Oh, it's not done. Right, they said this is like a really, really in-depth anomaly. Is this gonna be like, he walks across the sea, sort of like how Jesus did, possibly? It's gonna be like an... what do you call it? Like a similarity to that? Oh, it just jump cut. I see. That's a dead body. Holy shit. That's a lot of dead bodies. 
I'm kind of preparing for something to jump toward the screen again, like in the first two episodes, because I remember we got got pretty decently. Is this Earthbound meets Eldritch Horror? Kind of-ish? It's sort of like Earthbound plus Animal Crossing. There's there's a lot to take in. It's hard to like really explain the entire series so far. All you really need to know is that this game is kind of corrupted. There's a lot of anomalies being found in this game and it's being studied by scientists. And there's a brain controller interface with this game and it was made in the 90s. They had fucking I forgot what you call those types of controllers. The brain controllers in the 90s. And there's a lot of, like, religious motifs in here. Okay, the timer's still going crazy. El Avum. I can't imagine the amount of effort put into this series alone just for making it look like a real game. NPC? Hey, you. Identify yourself. It looks like the witch, doesn't it? The wicked witch? Slash info. So, so that, that thing that he just did? Remember, this is being... This is literally a... Uh, this is literally a scientist playing this right now. Or uh, whoever. A researcher playing this right now. So they know all the ins and outs of like the development of this game. They're trying to research what is causing it. So they'll be doing a lot of like backend style uh, commands and stuff to really figure out what's going on. A curious name for a child? Who are you? Me, good question. So they don't even know who this is. They might not even know who this NPC is. I suppose it doesn't matter. What about you? Why do you burst into my scene so early and uninvited? What is this place? We're not even to answer. <laughs> ah, my workshop. It's here where magic and springs f and flourish. M magic? Maybe this game doesn't have, like, magic? Are you blind? Look around you. Your dreams become tangible. What is- what is the fuck is that? What is that? That's horrifying. That's, like, realistic. That's too realistic. But that guy look, kind of looks cool. He kind of looks like a- those, uh, the Sentais. And each chisel stroke is a breath of life. That's Paris? Dude, it, there he is again. That kind of looks like an angel. Waiting for its moment in history. I wonder... Want to know something else? This workshop is about to become a gallery. I wonder if the parallels to the Wicked Witch are supposed to be, like, obvious. Gallery, do you keep data in here? Wouldn't that be too simple? Dude, I hate how uncannily realistic that face looks. No, the data, like marble, eagerly await my touch. So the NPCs know about the game itself, they're, like, self-aware. Watch. Oh, it's like an RTS. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Wait, they, they're controlling like an RTS. Okay, yeah, this is... Remember, this is all one anomaly. One single anomaly right now. Did you create all these statues? Materially, perhaps. So they do exist in the database. So these weren't in the original game. They exist somewhere, and at some time. I don't understand. I don't blame you. I used to be as lost as you are. I wonder if this NPC used to be like a person. A secret, a dying eye. That is a crazy camera angle. What is that? I don't think you want to ask that. To an artist such as myself, a passage to time outside of time. 
I'm not sure if this is like the AI already becoming like self-aware. Ah, I believe an example would be most beneficial. Please don't break the fourth wall. Please. Please don't break the fourth wall. Should I? I haven't finished my works yet. I wouldn't want to ruin the end result. Oh man, I don't think you want to see an example. They might fuck you up. Very well, slash info. That's their name, slash info. I can see the rest when it's finished. I'm really scared. I'm actually really scared. It's gonna fuck with the game. Angel Zero for Solus in Corte Europe. Ocasus Portenio. Like, I'm butchering all of this. I don't know what this is all saying. I only recognize Europe in there. The donkey, the dragon, and the ship. Maybe it's uploading a game? <gasps> Wait! This might be uploading one a game like a single game inside the emulator, inside the inside the brain cartridge or the brain controller. Yeah, I think these are all games. These are all games of the brain controller. Okay, so you, the NPC might have edited it. We'll see what happens. Ten o'clock, there's news. Buenos Aires, Ocasus. Nine of Oris. That flow abyss looks pretty crazy. Wait, did they make its own game? Look at it carefully. Maybe it's not a game? I don't want to look at this. I don't want to look at this. Don't look, don't stare at this. Oh my god. Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck? Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell? Whoa! This is some awesome music. What the fuck? Wait, this isn't even a video game anymore. This is like... Hyperrealism. I don't want to say that word because it reminds me of... It reminds me of bad copypasta. This is... It could be Evangelion. <laughs> PS1 Evangelion. Maybe it's like a vision of the future? Come back soon. But not too soon. Okay, so... Maybe it was trying to manifest something... Maybe its goal is trying to manifest something in the real world? Whatever that could have been? locked. It's locked. And they decided not to come back too soon. And that was it. Wait, no. Is this still the same anomaly? Do they hate this place? That does not look like it belongs in the game. Is that an angel? It's an angel! I don't know about too much- I don't know enough about my biblical stories and lore to really know about this. Understand what's going on. What the hell? It's like a cyborg. Maybe we can free the angel? Maybe? I don't think the environment will take that kindly though if they did that. Does this have anything to do with Dr. Nowhere? It does not. The Valley Verde is its own series, but I was actually thinking about watching, um, oh. Turn on the console on March 22, 1997. Turn on the console. Maybe I meant turn off the console. I remember this is what it says whenever the uh, whenever the character dies. I yeah I do plan on watching Doctor Normalware after this if you have time. Anomaly, March twenty second event. That's anomaly. That, that that is so ominous as hell. Holy shit. I don't like the. Oh no, all the NPCs. All the NPCs. Oh, they're all wearing masks. 
They're all staring at the center. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's not good. Is this COVID again? Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Oh, they're a cult. <laughs> they're all a cult. And there's a person up there. It's the fox. Wait, what the fuck is this? That's the Argentinian flag, right? Maybe? I'm, I'm sorry if I, if I, if it's not. I think it is. 132. I don't know, we're about to find out. Master, the assembly is ready to begin whenever you are ready. Brother Ito, assist me. What is the primary function of knowledge? To break free from the chains of ignorance, Master. So that we can attain the coming enlightenment. Brother Dr. Nitro, hear me. What is the primary function of progress? To guarantee freedom, equality, and fraternity. To all the peoples of the world, Maester. Oh, oh fuck. Oh god, they're glitching. What is the primary function of leadership? To lead the blind to a prosperous world, brethren. This music, what the heck? Progress is God. Progress is God. Progress is God. Let the ceremony begin, Brother Ito assist us. This game does not exist, I'm sorry to tell you. It doesn't exist. Oh, oh, what the fuck? Wait, no, 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 what was that? What was that? Something up here in the top. It's like a deer? It's a deer or something. Can you guys tell what that is? I'm pretty sure it looks like a deer. Yeah, it's not a real game. This is just like a web series based off like a fake game. What is that? Kind of looks like a deer mask or a deer head. Oh, okay, never mind. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a god, or a demon. Light of Prometheus's dawn, master of maesters, we prostrate ourselves in fraternal union. I, I, I don't understand. It's a, it's a cow head. It's a cow head. Master, despite our constant vigilance, we suffered a minor setback. <laughs> what is going on? Whoa, 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 what the fuck is that? The woman you provided us failed to uphold their duties. They... They're all dead. They are all 100% dead. Those are all corpses. We humbly request a little more time. Wait, that's the robot! That's the PvP robot! Which is probably inhabited by, like, a, an actual human. Remember that this is just another minor offering. We give you our word this error will be rectified. The great offering will be next ceremony. Uh, 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 oh, oh. Goodbye, I guess. To the fourth pillar? Why? Previous versions were of lower quality. This one is as close to genuine as is possible. With a little more leaning, I'm not sure it will be only equal. Let's pass any of the five with ease. I just oh 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 goodbye. Oh, there he goes, Mr. NPC. Oh, he's fucked. He's so screwed. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh fuck. Oh my god. Uh. Oh. Oh shit. I, I didn't think this could have been possible within the PS1 graphics. I think he's still alive. What is this game? This is Valley Verde. That was hardcore, holy shit. He's alive! 
I cannot, I don't understand. Maybe that was his punishment? That was their punishment for not providing like a good, like, sacrifice? That was March 22 event. They were really upping their ante with the really creepy shit with this episode. Is he still there? He's still there! Oh, wait, does that mean Ito's request? Get 10 faces for the next carnival. March 22nd. So I wonder if the I wonder if the NPCs are aware that they're like, you know, trying to sacrifice things to like this this demon god, whatever it is. Or if that's just like a bug. I don't know what that says. My ARG sense is not strong enough to understand this. <laughs> okay. I guess we're back to minigame. Read report. Read full report. I don't know. How are they going to top that, man? How, how can they top that event? <laughs> Superplex Ultra dot bin. Superplex. Wait, what the? No, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. I know all those games. Wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back, go back. Under pressure. I think that's a real game. That was Dragon Ball Z. Off-world interceptor extreme. Are these real games? Hold on. Off-world interceptor. It is a real game. This is a real game. These are PlayStation One games on the on the brain console. And then where was uh Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> of course it is. Hexacom. I believe this is a fake game. A fake game inside a fake game. I think this is the game that they showcased in the last episode. Use the THP integrated memory function. So the memory card is basically their brain. If I remember correctly, Last time they tried playing a game inside the uh, THB brain thing, the uh, the Valley Verde corruption kind of started to like affect the game itself, the other games, and you saw shit in there that was not like normally available to see. I have a feeling that's probably what's gonna happen here too. Like the game is gonna get corrupted, and the Valley Verde like corruption will start affecting this. Once again, they made another whole ass game just for this series alone. They really captured like all the uh, all the graphics, the graphic fidelity of like the PS One in here. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay, there it is. There it is. There's the there's the corruption. What'd that say? Hold on, go back, go back, go back. What'd that say? What'd that say? I think that said it last time, too. Your TH brain device is experiencing severe corruptions that could result in game breaking malfunctions. This may also be due to poor connectivity. Try turning off the console, disabling learning mode. Learning mode? Hmm. And attempting to restart the game. Hey, Arthur, welcome in. Why did they delete the save data then? I'm not sure you can. That's like deleting your memories. Probably don't want to mess with that. I don't think they care much. <laughs> they're glowing through, they're glitching through the floor. He's in a loop. Oh shit, look at him. Look at him go. I could totally see this being like a PS1 horror game. That door does not look so great. It 
Imagine if it starts like becoming oh. I'm not sure if it's an actual brain. I believe it's a brain interface. So you hook up whatever the controller is to like your head or your mind or your brain or whatever. And it reads whatever's in there. And you can like experience. You can see the game itself and interact with it. Sort of like the Neuralink. Oh. I think that's the idea. This is sort of like a Neuralink style thing. I don't think this is part of the... Oh. I don't think this is part of the original game. Wait, isn't that the, that's the Crash Bandicoot boxes. Hold on. Those are the Nitro boxes. Wait, is that the robot? Oh. That's not good. Midas. That's the guy who touched, like, every, everything he touched turned into gold, wasn't it? Holy shit. Oh my god, that's a- Oh. Oh. I, I think this guy is back inside Valley- I think this guy is inside Valley Verde. This character is inside Valley Verde. This game is inside Valley Verde. I really, really wish I like knew more about the lore. There's a there's like a, a subreddit I believe that's dedicated to like trying to understand the lore of the entire game because it basically is an ARG. Let me not an ARG, but like a web series. The eye does not look. The eye looks like it's tweaking out. Oh, 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 no! Oh man. Retry. Retry! Do it! I want to see more! Unless it takes him back. He did lose a lot of health when he fell down. Oh, fuck. Oh, the game's really fucked. Ooh, I don't know if he can get back. Oh, he can? Okay, he has to survive the fall. But I feel like... Oh. I feel like... Oh, there it is. Yep, it's corrupted. This is 100% a coded message. 100%. Session interrupted. Irregular NPC interaction. Hey, that's the... That's the... Biblically correct angel that we saw in episode 1. There's all the masks. Hey, Foxo. Is it the father? I see the father back there. This old structure is barely holding on. It's a true hazard to us all. Perhaps some supports will help it survive the passage of time. Hey, want to make some extra coinage? Could you install these inside the church? Might as well. Okay, the interesting thing is, I don't know if this is like, if the angel is like a good thing or a bad thing. Because the father helped us out. Well, he helped the main character out in the uh, inside hell or whatever the fuck that was. And the father was inside like the, the barrier of the biblically correct angel. It does feel like there's two different like forces here that are like kind of Oh. Uh oh. Yesterday morning. I went to the Sistine Chapel to vote. Tranquilly. Never could have imagined what was about to happen. 
As crowds gather before the Vatican in St. Peter's Square, the almost incredible news is released to the world. This is this is real. John Paul I is dead. The announcement is received with a mixture of disbelief, shock, and sadness. This is real dialogue. John Paul had won the hearts of Catholics and non-Catholics throughout the world during one of the shortest reigns in papal history. Hailed as a pope of the people, John Paul's death was as dramatic and unexpected as his election 33 days earlier. 33 days oh, earlier. Oh. 33 days earlier. That's not good. 33 days oh, that's not good. I'm, I think like, a jump scare's gonna happen. Earlier. Jump scare happening. 33 days earlier. Jump scare. 33 days earlier. 33 days earlier. That was not a jump scare. This COD mission looks nuts. I know, right? It looks insane. Wait, are they rebuilding the church? The third temple? Maybe th that's the third temple that was like prophesized in the Bible, supposedly. Yeah, we're watching uh, Valley Verde right now, which is kind of going hard. It's going too hard. I don't understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> I'm so lost. I'm trying to piece it together, but I'm not big brain enough for this. Don't first person it. Yeah, I don't know if, like, technically, even if there might be two different sides, that's a cross. E technically, even if there are two different sides of, like, heaven and hell, I don't know if, like, heaven is technically, like, you know, a good thing. Because remember, when we approached, like, uh, when the player character approached, like, the Garden of Eden, he got, like, uh, he got sm he got smited by the biblically correct angel. He got killed by, like, the flame sword. That's the Pope. He's that he's a Pope. Oh. The priest does feel like he's good though. Even though it was filled with unclean beasts and unholy smells. The Ark was able to carry eight people to salvation. The truth still lies firm here upon the rock. For all who seek it. Even though those who covet the wisdom of the great architect can't stand the humbleness of a simple carpenter. Hey, that's probably a, a Bible verse too. This tribulation too shall pass. That might be the end of the episode. Yep, it is. Cool! cool series but it is so beyond me it feels like this is what like you know what this feels like this must have been the feeling that people got when they were watching pets cop for the first time before they like psychoanalyzed it like crazy all right i guess we gotta wait another how many how, how long was ago let me check how long ago that episode was between uh so part one that was one year ago part two 11 months ago part three three weeks ago almost one entire 10 months almost an entire year since the last episode so, so i think uh i think we'll be waiting for a little while but that's fine because the amount of effort put into this series is so so much i'm surprised there aren't more people like you know trying to like figure out what's going on at least not like you know the usual video essay like style like horror like youtubers I'm pretty sure eventually they will. Uh, like, you know, I think Nexpo already covered it once on one episode, but... I think once more, like, episodes appear, sort of like the same with Pets Cop, we'll start to get, like, a more deeper, a deeper, like, analysis of it. Because I kind of want one. I want someone to, like, explain what the fuck is going on. Because going to this blind, like, seeing all those, like, uh, ciphers and all, like, the, uh... I forgot what that was. Like those, uh, those random characters. They definitely translate to some type of message, probably for like the the audience to figure out on their own to piece together what else is going on outside of what is given to you. But I'm too lazy for that. I can't figure that shit out. So move on to the next one, which is Doctor 
nowhere. And if you guys don't know what this is, basically this is like the new hot web series that came out recently. I don't want to call it analog horror because I don't know if you can really call it analog horror, but the designs are fucking insane. Like the actual designs for these are actually crazy. And this is this is like made this guy was made like 17. He's 17 when he made this. He's basically like the new the new King Pixels guy. Yeah, it's just horror. We'll just call it web horror. The Boiled One Phenomenon. He made this when he was 17. And it looks, it works so well, doesn't it? It's fucking insane. Kind of looks like, um... Reminds me, reminds me of username 666. Oh, that hand is going crazy. Oh, he didn't break in. <laughs> I was 100% expecting him to break in. So that was, that was like his, uh... I believe that was just a concept idea, and because it was so popular, and since it took off, he probably continued the, uh, he probably continued the lore for the series with the rest of the episodes. Has this ever happened to you all? Or happened to you? All the lights. Has this ever happened to you? Is that... It's getting dark. Outside. Is that Bonzi Buddy? You are getting ready for that. Dude, that's Bonzi Buddy. What the fuck? What's a Bonzi? Why is that the Bonzi Buddy audio? Do you feel that? Or maybe hear that? That sinking feeling that something is following you as soon as you turn. I'm in a dark room, by the way. Well, I'm not. literally by myself in the dark. We have a brilliant solution. Hello. That's comforting. Thanks, buddy. There is nothing that follows you after that follows you. <laughs> what is Bonzi Buddy doing? <laughs> it's taking me out. It's, it's it's scary as hell, but <laughs> the audio. I don't know. He he was kind of selling me a, a bit too hard on that uh, on on the fact that nothing follows me. Something might tell me that something is following me after. Ooh. Hello. Ooh. Oh, I like this. Toe T O E Love Thumper. What do you want? What do you want? Is that an Nightlight commercial? It could be. This is gonna break the fourth wall. Please go away. Please is that a go away? Is that a TV? Go. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh, eh. Oh, God. Oh, wait, it's breaking through. Oh, it's breaking through. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, wait, it went through. It broke through the, through, through the, through the monitor. Love thumper. Oh, uh, oh, uh, ah, uh, uh, hi. Maybe this is what the the kid is seeing. He, he's gonna enter, isn't he? Hey, look, kid, let me in. I'm a fairy. Just, just go. Just come in. <laughs> just come in already. Just do it. Oh, oh. The body appeared untouched. The MS Paint, the MS Paint style, like, textures and, like, no. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't like that. I do. Oh, I did not like that. Oh, that sound effect. The, the sound, the crowd sound effect. Oh, that was not good. Yeah, this is your FBI agent that lives in the walls. Former concept. So this is, like, non-canon. I feel like this is non-canon. All this stuff right here. T-O-E, T-O-E, T-O-E. I feel like the boiled one is like the main cannon, most like probably. <laughs> Making friends. It's that face. Time to rise and shine. Are you brainwriting again? Um, I believe this is a cognito hazard. Wait, what was that? Hold on, what was that? I'm pretty sure as soon as you see this face, uh, you're you're cursed. It's gonna be after you. I don't think there's anything there, right? 
Okay, nothing here. It was just a static. Good children are up, bright, and early. Good children play pretend. Pretend what? Sai Shrimple, we'll come in. No text? That's a pretty cute drawing. I like it. Go children, do not play with their food until it is all gone. What? Whoa, 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 what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? Go back, 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 back. Oh, he's breaking in. Oh, he's gonna break in. He's gonna break in through our TV again. This is a TV. This is an actual TV. You can see it all around. Go children, make friends. For governmental personnel viewing only. Why is it in the, why is it in the, uh, the PowerPoint font stuff? I don't get it. <laughs> it's, it's throwing me off. Everything around here is throwing me off. Hello, Groovy. 13th March. Pen Palace. Connected seconds, Palace for life. Yo, man, what's up? It's been like forever. Okay, seriously, you thought you were dead or something. No ERP allowed in the chat. Hey, stop that. Look, we've been online for friends for a while now. Yes, best friends. I don't think that dot. That dot is not good. Hey, look, I know it's none of my business, but it feels like you've been acting really distant lately. You went through something? If you so, I'm here and you can talk to me, man. That is not his friend. That is the TOE, or the fuck the TOE is. Like I said, it's none of my beeswax, and you don't have to just say nothing. But do you need something? Face call- oh god. Don't- don't face call, man. Video call? It's almost like 1am where I am, man. Yeah, yeah, don't ask your friends to fucking- to fucking, like, call you at 1am in the morning. Like, what if- what if everyone else is sleeping in their place? Well, what if, like, they don't look good? What if there's, like, the entity behind them doesn't, like, want to be seen? Whack time zones, remember? Please. Now. It's 1 a.m. It's a back time zone. Are you good, man? Like I said, I am here if you want to talk. I know you started that new school recently and it was whack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, talk face. Really sorry, but tomorrow, okay? Please, don't let me fr How is this man not tipped off that something is off? Seriously, y'all. Oh, <laughs> Why is the sh why is the shade? Please, 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 please. Whoa, 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 okay, 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 okay. Not oh, cool, man. What the heck, okay? Okay. Just please oh god, don't answer. Guy bro, don't do not answer. Do not face call. Do not face call. Do not sky starving. <laughs> starving. <laughs> I'm so hungry, man. Please can we face call? I'm so hungry. Nah, though. I swear this is a weird heckin' <laughs> prank. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Jiggly and Milky. Thank you, thank you. Welcome in. Oh. Oh. Oh, my friend. You look just like what I remember. No, no, it makes any sense. Everything inside was gone. Hmm. The laugh track. The laugh track really sells it, you know? Alright. Now. We get into the real, the real meat of it. The Boiled One Phenomenon. This is, this is where it really, really started. Surprisingly, I never actually looked into this too much, but apparently this is like... The new web, the new face of horror. If, if Kane Pixels was like the face of horror back in like, uh, what was it, 2019? Then this guy is the new face of horror in like 2024. Make sure you have the following in your vicinity. Earplugs, a pencil, a sheet of paper, a standard Christian Bible open to Psalms 9110. What's Psalms 9110? I bet you if I type in Psalms 9110 in my like Google bar right now, it's going to show like boiled one phenomenon. Psalms, Psalm 91. All right, let's see. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. 
All right, you guys, take your Bibles out. T near your tent. Your tent, okay. If something unusual begins speaking in tongues tangible to the naked ears, insert your earplugs and turn to your pencil and paper. All right, guys, make sure you have all your reading materials right here. Write the following on the page. I can see this paper. I can see my hand. I can't hear the screaming of thousands. I can't hear the feast. I am a moving, breathing human being on planet Earth. Seems normal, okay. In the event you're- oh, I missed it. Hold on. I was, uh, updating my title. The evil- okay, so that's- that's what the, the- the psalm was. After these words are written, recite psalms 9110 aloud. If memories and imagery of something unholy persist in your mind, pray. It's all you can do. You're fucked. It basically just said you're fucked. In the event you are required to carry out these procedures, contact authorities immediately afterwards. You will be administered amnestics. Many appear to be lead a normal life afterwards. Isn't that amnestics? Amnestics. Aren't those from like SCP? I'm pretty sure that's like from SCP. That word is from SCP. Um, this guy, the, the kid who wrote this, he was 17 at the time, so I'm sure he was taking a lot of inspiration from like other analog horror and SCP at the same time. August 13th, 2003, Tree of Heaven. In the late 1990s, now a classified document-based television program would debut from a local station in Pennsylvania. The program revolved around woodland, plants, and animals, and primarily... Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to pause it. And was primarily directed towards children. The star of the show, a narrator, would talk about the wonders of nature, the dangers of it, how to appreciate it, and most importantly, how to protect yourself. Unfortunately, in 2001, the program would be taken off to air due to the host passing away. Then something odd happened. I love, I love this fucking movies maker style like presentation. It's so good. It's so nostalgic. Uh, let's see. On August 13th, 2003, the 13th episode of the series began to rerun seemingly out of nowhere. The follow audio recording depicts the beginning sections of the episode. Good morning, oh, hold on. Video footage taken from episodes 3, 6, 8, 10, and 13 of the program, courtesy of the Frada branch. Ephrata branch. That's probably going to be important later on. All rights reserved. Good morning, bushwhackers. Today we're venturing into the heart of the forest to find a plant. This is, beautiful. is this gonna be like that one SCP that like corrupts uh, Ronald Reagan talking? And here in Pennsylvania, it's not as common, but still something to look out for. And here on we aim to uncover all the wonderful nice censored location. Offer, no matter how minuscule or gigantic. So let's get going, shall I want to see Ronald Reagan. Show me Ronald Reagan. Found primarily in deep North American woodlands, poison oak. Yeah, Ronald Reagan cut up while talking. And places of origin, also referred to as the Tree of Heaven. Tree of in Heaven. In China and Taiwan, one of these invasive species made its way to America in the 1700s. Invasive. And took its ground here boldly. Invasive. Known, invasive species means that like it's um. It takes over the econo the uh, not economy, the uh, ecosystem of the environment, and it ruins it, right? Or it messes with it, because it doesn't belong there. So like, uh, it causes an imbalance, I believe. Okay. That's probably symbolic. That's probably very symbolic. During one of the interlude segments, an anomalous broadcast would hijack the program. This broadcast depicted videos of a red melted face. And I spoke to the viewer in a warm yet deeply disconcerting voice. Hey, that's me. I'm a, I'm a warm and deeply con disconcerting voice. Maybe this is me. Maybe I accidentally did, got drunk and did something a, a little quirky. This face and its properties will be hereby referred to as Fen228. 
As Fen228 spoke, clips of footage and even live camera feed monitoring hospitals and bedrooms would be occasionally overlaid on the screen, obscuring Fen228's face. <laughs> oh my- Fen228, okay, yeah. We'll, we'll just call it that from now on. Fen228. I mean, it kills people, right? That's what Fent does. It's the same thing. Though most remember Fent228 speaking English, multiple non-English speakers, viewers, remembered understanding every word that was spoken. Oh, it's some Tower of Babel shit then, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what the eyeliner's saying, if someone wants to chime in on that. The following clip is a restored recording of the anomalous broadcast. The duration of the clip has been shortened, and the audio has been muffled, reversed, and dampened. These alterations are absolutely necessary to suppress its hazardous attributes as effectively as possible. For maximum safety, please watch, watch with blue light glasses and insert your earplugs. So, basically, they're going to show us a cognito hazard that can totally fuck you up. And they're just going to be like, yeah, we took a lot of, we took a lot of measures to make sure you guys don't get fucked up. But in case you guys do get fucked up, uh, just put your glasses on and uh, put your earplugs in and you're probably going to be fine. And if not, then go, um, just go pray to God because you're, you're just going <laughs> to, you're fucked. All right. Hello, Mr. Melted Face. Is there captions? Yes, amazing captions. Ooh, I like that effect. It's so simple, isn't it? This guy will ruin my sleeve? Does this, this? It's like... It's a cool effect. This broadcast will be hereby referred to as Broadcast 813. Broadcast 813 was reviewed by roughly 530 residents throughout the Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania area. Upon viewing, left many severely distraught. Okay, I do have a question. Actually, no. I, I have mods put up a poll right now. Was that scary? Was that was the was the melted face guy scary? Was Fent was that Fent? I forgot his name. Yeah, mods put that put up a poll. Scary or not, I wanna- I actually wanna know. Cause that was- Dis- I would say it's a little bit disconcerting, but scary? It's hard to tell. I wonder if I can vote on this. I cannot vote in my own poll. <laughs> I can't vote in my own poll! It's okay guys, this poll is anonymous. You can answer- you can answer honestly. Aside from the discomfort and paranoia Fen 228s a television presence had brought to the viewers, there were other side effects that these viewers experienced that were highly unnatural. Is it more disturbing? Yeah, the face was like, you know, it's humanistic, humanoid, but it's like very off. And the way that the the mouth moves, I'd say that like, you know, it's, it's uncanny. But I, I like the way that they did it. It's very simple effects, but because the, the face is so like, like almost not human like it's almost human but it's like disconfigured i can see how that could like you know be very very spooky and scary many viewers reported not being able to keep the image of fen 228's face out of their minds some even continue to hear its voice after viewing okay how much you want to bet at some point the face will probably superimpose into the background of this that's like probably a victim who requested to remain anonymous claimed that the face was living in his brain and feeding on his spine. <laughs> I know they're described trumpets playing in their ears before they fell asleep. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, this, like, this description will make you guys probably start seeing and hearing shit that isn't there because of the fact that it, like, is supposedly anomalous. That's, like, the beauty of these types of, like, horror. The idea that, like, you know, the idea itself is like cursed will make you start to hear shit and see shit in the dark when you normally wouldn't have even thought about it because like you know the, the idea that the knowledge is cursed is already like scary enough 
you see and hear shit that isn't there. None of these people knew that this was only the beginning. The beginning of a whole new species of suffering. <laughs> suffering? <laughs> Hold up. Suffering that would never be fully understood. Okay. August 14th, 2003. The Great Northeast Blackout, 2003. After the anomalous frequency was detected by television station troubleshooters, the NERC was ordered by the Eferda branch, Eferada branch, to have all power grids local to the state of Pennsylvania disabled by 4 p.m. to prevent further escalation of the anomaly and the public knowledge of broadcast 813. I like the I like the visual effects. The visual comics. The outage ultimately spread to various parts of New York, New Jersey, Ohio, and Canada, as well as Creating the famous Great Northeast Black... Oh! Wait, this is real! I remember this. Hold on. I, I think this is a real event. Northeast Blackout 2003. Yeah! Okay. So they're sort of like trying to tie in the idea that this blackout wasn't because of like some random like natural thing. It's because of this fucking melted face guy. Almost 50 million people were without power, some not getting it back until days later. Analog really, analog horror really is something weird happened. It gave everyone brain cancer. <laughs> Do not watch this tape. It'll curse you and your family and your and your loved ones. Your mother's like feet will melt off. Your brother will die in his sleep. Your your sister she'll she'll find like she'll get back with her ex boyfriend, and you your eyes will melt out of your head. Okay, now we will show you the video that you will not supposed to watch. That's pretty much every single yeah. That's every single analog horror ever. All right. Poll is ended. Was Fen Tutu Wait scary? Yes, 50%. No, 50%. So half of you guys thought that was that was scary. Okay, so this is this is what counts as scary in the year 2024 now. This I, I don't make the rules. You guys chose this. During the confusion caused by the outage, all traces of the broadcast 813 were collected by the Ephrata branch and seemingly wiped from existence including news articles in the works from the morning after the broadcast, internet posts, recordings, and more. Wow, they managed to wipe the internet of that too? That's pretty, that's pretty, that is pretty crazy. It's very hard to wipe something from the internet. If they actually successfully did that... Well, I mean, they didn't, obviously, I mean, because we're watching this shit. It's 2003. I guess so. The cause of the blackout was prompted, promptly covered up and claimed to have been a combination of human error and the results of falling trees onto psychic power lines somewhere in Cleveland, Ohio. Of course it's fucking Ohio. Why wouldn't it be Ohio? But the damage had been done. Aftermath. Analog horror is basically an outgrowth of those shitty old haunted wrong creepy pastas. Hey, I like those shitty old haunted wrong creepy pastas. Those those made up my early internet like spooky scary stuff. That's what got me into horror in the first place, along with like watching YouTubers. I think it's endearing to see people like remake old creepy pastas into like analog horror nowadays because, I mean, we have the technology to like actually like make it feel like it's like truly hyper realistic. 12 days after the broadcast 813 was blocked from the air, a historically massive influx of pseudocoma, LIS, occurred throughout the state of Pennsylvania, leaving 509 people affected and many families in shock. Pseudocoma. Fake coma? Pseudocoma is an extremely rare condition in which a patient experiences a cerebromedulla spinal. Wow. I got that word. I, I got that word? Okay, I'll take it. A cerebral medullospinal disconnection, leaving them to be conscious but unable to move or communicate verbally due to complete paralysis of all voluntary muscles in the body except for a vertical eye movements and blinking. Wait. LIS. Locked in syndrome. Oh, this is locked in syndrome. 
This anomalous outbreak of such a rare condition was regarded as a spectacle by the U.S. Department of Health and was put under governmental investigation immediately. So the people who saw the broadcast basically ended up having locked-in syndrome. One thing in common, why is that all whited out? With all of these cases is that the patients had been at home watching TV the night the broadcast 813 was aired. Yeah, they all locked in when they were watching the TV. <laughs> but whoa, 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 what the fuck was that? What the? No, 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 no. Ah, there it is. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's just a part of the TV. I thought it was clever. I thought I saw something. Am I missing something though? Why is it? Why is it like that? Maybe you have to like flip it negatively or something. Oh, oh, that's him. That's him. That was him. I missed it. <laughs> he's, he's, he's poking. I was looking at this. He's right here. I, I was reading. I was so locked into reading this. I didn't know him. Notice him like popping up. That was so subtle. Though the victims of the outbreak were unable to speak, they were able to communicate through Morse code by blinking. More than 60 victims were interviewed. God, dude, that's awful. Imagine being locked in your own body, but you're conscious. You're aware of the days passing. You're aware of the fact that you have to, like, use the restroom. Or you're aware of the fact that, like, you know, you have, like, needs. But you can't, like, do anything except just blink. Many of these interviews held unavailing results that often led to more questions and many others held results that required archival or termination. Termination. However, fairly late into the investigation, the Ferrata branch was notified of a particularly odd case revolving around one job Zamperini, elderly victim of the anomalous pseudocoma outbreak. Job Samperini specifically requested his alias to be oh changed. I, it's so fast to be used in future records instead of his real name, which will remain classified. Job. What a crazy ass name, Job. Samperini was a war vet and fluent in Morse code, putting him on the mark as a potential interviewee as soon as the outbreak was put under investigation. I don't see anything in the background just yet. I don't see his face. After a very odd photo was taken in his backyard by his visiting grandson, his family became deeply troubled and convinced that his house was haunted. Oh right, we, yeah, yeah, we saw, we saw that, we saw the, uh, the, the bad guy. So we gotta, we gotta say our, our verse. There shall, hold on, there shall be no evil. Wait, no, what? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. Come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Dude, Old English is fucking awful. Fuck Old English. Who speaks like that? This led to a contact. This led them to contact a local priest in hopes that his house would be blessed. The following photo depicts Fent, 228, standing next to the small playhouse in Zamperini's backyard. Alright, is it going to be... Do you think he's going to be animated or censored? I'm going with animated. It's going to be a still photo, but the, the guy is going to probably like walk around or something. The photo itself has proven to be non-hazardous and safe to view, though still anomalous in nature. For most comfortable viewing experience, wear a blue light, glasses, or view from a distance of 3 feet or more. Alright, guys, remember. 3 feet distance. Otherwise... Mr. Boldman will visit you in your bed tonight. Oh, he's tall. Look at him. He looks so nice. Dude, he's pogging off. Look at him. He's actually pogging off. Oh, the music. Oh, the music. Zamperini claimed something horrible and unholy was with him and would hurt him and possibly others if he described it and what it was telling him. What? Wait, that makes no sense. He, during this interview, he's being interviewed by the government asking him what he saw and he's like saying, yeah, this guy, this thing said that he would hurt my family if I tell him, if I tell you guys what I saw and he's telling him, he's telling them what he saw 
Does he not give a shit about his family? He doesn't like the feds. Maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. Boldman doesn't like the feds. Following is a recovered, previously archived recording in which the officer T. Gomez of the Ferrada branch interviews Job Zamperini. So the Ferrada branch is basically a portion of the government which deals with this type of phenomenon, the boiled one phenomenon. Hello, Mr. I'm Officer Gomez. I hope you're doing well today. That was kind of weird. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Oh, it's clear. Your condition and possibly um, unholiness within your home. Unholiness. Give it to God and go to sleep. Ask. Okay, first and foremost, so I guess I guess this is supposed to be like a photo that uh was taken. Wait, is that him? Is that him? That's probably him right here. That's him. He's right here. He's right here. Any onset symptoms before you lost complete mobility of your body? But there was a face. Hmm. It's peeking out. When did you it's it's slowly coming in pixel by pixel. Interesting. Oh, that friend. He's being silly. The people who have seen the broadcast that you saw on August the 13th described having vivid and upsetting hallucinations. Do you think this is something your brain has created? Brain hallucinations. No, it is in the window. Please describe this face to me. Wait, why would he describe the face to him? Horribly blurred, not of Lord Christ. So basically he says, God, look the other way. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, guys. Guys. The sign. <laughs> the sign. <laughs> Wait, hold up, hold up a minute. Something's a bit off here. <laughs> I can see you. I, uh, I still don't see it. Have you been having any hallucinations aside from the face? I'm sorry. I'm, hear I hear that. screaming of many voices. Are these screams constant? A night before I go to sleep. Thank but you. Lord Christ, the Lord Christ, God will protect me. He says while he is trapped uh, inside his own body, while he hears the screaming of thousands, and he sees Mr. Boiled Man literally inside the window right now. You shedding light on this is helping more than you. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. what was that? 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 Rewind, rewind. Okay, something, something flashed. More than you. No. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. If that even is anything. It could just be like a like a video glitch. I can see you. He's coming! Hey, buddy. Hey, guys. Oh, he's being a little... Oh, he's just visiting his friend. He's visiting his friend. Wonderful day. The miracle of birth. A fetal fan... A fetal... Fanfare. Oh. Uh, I do. Are you sure that's laughter? I thought that was screaming. Oh. Oh, 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 uh, hey, oh, oh. Hey, buddy, your arm is kind of tweaking out. Oh, oh. Uh. Oh. Warning. If you can see the screen, it means it is not safe to continue viewing. The program will end shortly. I hope you guys remembered your revival verses. Protocol Beravita 228 has been initiated. Why would you... Why would you show an audience an anomalous video? That makes no sense. A cognito hazard video. Perform the procedures given to you during the introduction portion of this video immediately. Alright guys, earplugs in. Uh, blue light glasses on. Write down that one phrase. I'm human. I can see my hands or whatever the fuck. I cannot hear the screaming of thousands. I'm a human on planet Earth or some shit.
also uh i forgot something something about like uh something dashing your foot against a stone or something No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Honestly, I like this. I like this a lot. Like, I don't think any analog horror... Can you even call this analog horror? It's more like a web series. No really, no web series has really gone for, like, the... Uh, the idea that, like, knowing something can spread. The Cognito Hazard style, like, evil idea horror i'm surprised that's never really been a thing because you know that's kind of scary to think about as soon as you are aware of this thing as soon as you're aware of like this uh monster or whatever the fuck it is it, like it already it's already after you like it's gonna affect you the boy in the bath isn't that what the ring was about kind of but the ring was more like you watched the video and then you become infected this is just like knowing as soon as you know about this guy, he's like after you. Your body remains unclean from the toils of yesterday. You are no condition to sleep like this. Is this a flash game? It's going for the What what if this game what if this entire series was made in flash? Oh my god, it might actually be made in flash. A shower will make you feel better. I like the blinking. The blinking transitions. It really is. Guys, I think this is actually made in Flash. Holy shit. Damn, dude. Imagine, imagine if someone made like a horror series like this back in like 2001, 2002. Can you imagine the face of horror if like it evolved from like this type of like horror alone? But it wasn't my fault. Time to go inside. He's pale. He probably doesn't. He probably doesn't go outside that much. He's he's uh oh oh friend. Why are you leaving? <laughs> well, why are you leaving your friend inside the bathroom? He is tall. Time to close the door, buddy. Time to close the door. Yep, okay. Wow, smart. <laughs> I'll, I, I didn't need to say anything. I'll just go to sleep. Oh, oh what? <laughs> no, you heard me. I didn't hear anything. It was Good night, buddy. Good night. <laughs> Didn't even like do anything to him. Short film about guilt. That was a short film. I'm not even sure if that related to the lore of the series. I don't know if this actually is part of the lore. I think this is just literally just an advertisement. I'll double check. Might as well. We can give him the time of the day. As a treat. That's, is that the creator? What it's the boiled one. Who gets the boiled one plushie? He already has it. <laughs> this is very adult swim esque. What? Of course you have. No. Introducing the boiled one plushie. Customers are. It, it's literally just adult swim. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's got locked in syndrome. <laughs> Dude, this is, you know what? The, actually, I take it back. This isn't adult swim. This is more like Filthy Frank, unironically. Dude, this is Filthy Frank humor. Punishable actions include breathing too loud, killing one stone with two birds, complaining about 
torture. Being from a country, licking your fingers to turn the pages of a book. Doctor tested and approved. Is that the, hey, that's the guy. That's the, uh, is that his grandpa? Maybe he got his grandpa to, like, be inside his, like, analog horse race. That's kind of cute. <laughs> that, that that's really cute. I like that. He had his own he had his own like family members be part of like his analog horror. <laughs> and it did it pretty well. He's just like, "Grandpa, just just stand, just, just let me take a photo of you inside bed." Ah, uh, there you go. Okay. What do you take? Why am I taking a photo? Don't worry about it. Also, hold this plushie. Very important. Don't don't worry about it, Gramps. You can do with your bowl one plushie. So, thanks for the hydrate watch below. Feed it. It's always famished. Offer it fine ceiling. Meats. It's always vanished. Purchase it. Here are some things you shouldn't do with your foil one plushie. One we're still in the COD category? No, we're not. Are we? No fucking way. Are we? No, we're not. I think you might have to refresh. I might actually. What the heck? When did it change? Who changed it to Call of Duty? Why is it like this? Okay. Wow, Call of Duty sure looks different for some reason. <laughs> Whoops. Wow, this DLC for this DLC for Advanced Warfare, I didn't know like and no one else had early access to it. Can't do that. This pilot's license was suspended in 1962. Boil it. It's already boiled. Why waste your time? Be in its presence alone. Purchase it. We've been getting a lot of questions and concerns regarding the boiled one plush. The boiled one plushie. Order now. Thirty dollars. I thought it was just chatting too. That was weird. Limbs. Side effects include limbs. <laughs> that was a really good commercial. I like that commercial a lot. This guy like knows his humor. Thanks in advance. Love you guys so much. All right, let's be the last one. The Oddity Compendium. Was that him? That's not the boiled one, right? That's someone else. Doctor Nowhere's. Is this part of the is this also part of the lore? This video and everything in it is for educational purposes only. I'm not sure like it's hard to tell like what's part of the um what's part of like the actual story and what isn't. I can't tell if this is all like, you know, if this is all like their own stories or if it all is part of like uh like one continuous storyline. That's the unboiled, <laughs> the boiled one before he became boiled. The unboiled one. Prop left from one of the early vids. This thing, maybe. The um, a beginner's anomaly education program. Welcome to the oddity compendium. Today we will be learning about. I I can't get over how much I love these like uh, this these types of like visuals. It's so, it's so, like, early 2000s-esque. But then, like, the the actual, like, horror itself is so, so, like, out there. It's very, very, like, 2020s. It's like a combination of the... It's like combining two different, like, time periods of horror, which I like a lot. Is there a captioning? Conscious reality fracture. A conscious reality fracture is an event that may occur when an individual perceives material that originates from incompatible reality. Symptoms include migraines, excessive bouts of deja vu, instant death, and more. <laughs> Why the end more? What does end more mean? <laughs> Actually, I might have to change the stream title. I might. Ha I don't think we're gonna get through this summon house tonight, unfortunately. I'm just leave it as this. And more. Yeah, there's instant death. And more if you want to. Installment number one: faux beds, a land of forgotten faces, and geometric knowledge beyond belief. How is it Call of Duty again? What is with this? My OBS says it's just chatting. There you go. We learned today. 
God, dude, what, what, what's this style of text called? Pop art? Pop text? Your own bed may be harboring a hunger for flesh. For your flesh. Sleep with a cold fan on if possible. That's what I do. I cannot sleep without some type of, like, white noise on. Word art. That's it. Word art. I need some type of, like, white noise inside my bedroom or I cannot sleep. I will hear shit. I will see shit. I will probably see the boiled one if I did not have, like, some type of, like, air filter or white noise machine or, like, cold fan, like, blowing my room to just, like, drown out my thoughts. If you ever walk downstairs one morning and your family's gone, interacting with their headless corpses, the remain in their steads should be avoided. Non-existence is a contagious disease. Non-existence is a contagious disease. Hmm. You know, I was going to interact with the corpses of my of my family that were headless downstairs, but thanks, TV advert, for letting me know that I probably shouldn't do that in the first place. If you're out of in the middle of nowhere and you get a rush of brilliant ideas, turn back immediately. Enlightenment is a drug and the withdrawals can kill. Enlightenment is a drug? Like knowledge? Isn't this technically knowledge, enlightenment, knowing about this? Oddity 1, flesh beds. Populus, what does it say? Populus colcida, category parasite. Flesh beds. Flesh beds on the crest folk are a species of parasitic subhuman that highly resemble bedding mattresses. That is, that is not a bed. That is, that is not a bed. <laughs> I don't know what kind of head ass bed this fucker has seen before but i don't think my beds look like this uh, unless uh, uh, unless they do in which case i have one really fucked up bed why the laugh track what, what? <laughs> why the laugh track on this flesh that appears identical to a standard mattress however slicing the thin sheet like skin reveals many soft organs limb like appendages and the humanoid head which hides beneath the skin they were first discovered Wait, so if you if you are scared you have a parasite living inside your bed, you should literally just cut open your bed to see if there are organs inside. <laughs> okay. It could be worse, I mean... Yeah, that's a, that's a decent way of testing whether or not you, your bed is going to fucking eat you or not. Late 1960s, when the mattress company was surveyed in excess storage, upon finding many seemingly pristine mattresses... Oh, I like the, the art again. Sold, they gave them away to thrift shops and people in need. People pristine? Hold on, what was that? Upon finding many pristine mattresses that had not been sold, they gave them away to thrift shops and people in need. They fucking ate the homeless. <laughs> they ate the homeless people. The people who received the mattress folk initially had no issues with the folk heads. It wasn't until the air began to warm up that these heads awoke from their unique and folk informations. The first recorded victim was Alice Dijer. Why is her head? Her head is just gone. Her head is just Oh, it's, oh, it's censored. I see it's censored. Why are they laughing? They're doing a they're doing a laugh track after she fucking died. What is this? The first recorded was a victim of 19 year old Alice Dyche. <laughs> oh man, what a good joke. What a great joke. Audience, audience laugh. Audience laugh right now. She had been sleeping on a flesh bed for roughly six months before her sudden disappearance. After noticing the stench of sulfur and rot originating from her bed, her family called authorities and the- I like the- I like the frowny face too. <laughs> yeah, our daughter fucking died. There's a stench of death coming from her- from her house. Probably should- let's just put a smile, like a frowny face on the door so people know not to go in there. Mattress revealed the feasting parasite, several hundred human bones, and the half-digested Alice. Half digested. Dress folks sustain themselves just by waiting for the body heat of a host to wake them from their dormant state. Kind of like an egg, but not nearly as tasty. I still can't get over this fucking like Bonzi buddy style like voice. So this is the head. Are they trying to like copy them? Sort of like. It's sort of like um, what's it called? Invasion of the body snatchers, kind of. Except they're not like trying to copy them. It's more like they're just trying to eat them. They just want to. They just want some food. Ghost of the Year. Ghost of the Year? I don't think I've ever heard of that. Can they survive if I put them into a washing machine? I think they'd probably drown. And then you see all their organs spill out. 
after they wake, they slowly unfold themselves from their soft mattress-like body. What the hell? This process is very gradual and happens underneath its body or on its side so as not to be detected. Oh, it's on the side of the mattress so you can't actually see it. Is that their head? Is that the head? What the fuck? That's a cool effect though. I like that. To be detected. After roughly a month of this process and on the night 17 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, its head and arms fully emerge and fall asleep and roast into its body, where prey is slowly- Did they just watch- Are they just watching some- some girl get eaten? <laughs> on- on a recording of a video camera? What the fuck? Oh. Wait, what the hell? Is that the head? Oh, that's the- I think that's the head. Oh, that is the head. A feast fit prick. <laughs> they're so nonchalant about this. They are. They're pretty much just a silly guy. Yeah. They're just a bit hungry. Not much is known about how these sleeping beauties came about. Sleeping beauties. Since they are subhuman, they were once a branch of Homo sapiens that merged with a missile network many years ago. Autopsies of flesh Wait, so they, they're like mushroom people, basically. They're fun guys. Suggested systems have revealed the NS samples from thousands of different people in each instance, some even tracing to people born during the 1600s. Another odd thing to note is that the mattress folk themselves contain DNA belonging to humans as well. Wait, that makes sense. Isn't the theory... Isn't the theory that they were originally like humans, but then they fused with like mushroom people? One instance shared DNA in a blood type with Napoleon Bonaparte, leader of the French what? during the time that the mattress folk were assumed to have come into existence. Napoleon was a mattress folk? It might be a good idea to throw out that mattress that feels just a bit too warm lately. You might be sharing it with something unwanted. Good night. Ah, yes, my mattress. It looks exactly like this. I, I love when my mattress just smells at me when I'm sleeping and just breathes in and out and it feels damp as hell. And don't let the bed light. I know, I knew... <laughs> Of course. It, of course, the fucking mattress folk originated from the French. Who would have thought? Oh, well, that was Oddity 1. The Oddity... Oddity 1, if you think about it, if you guys think about it, Oddity 1 was literally just the French. Because <laughs> it originated from Napoleon, so... It's not, it's not wrong to say that the first Oddity in this video is literally just a French. This macrocosm is a subreality nearly identical to Earth, save for the fact instead of humans, tail headless corpses were made. Wait, 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 wait. That's the uh, th that's the thing that we saw before. That was the that was the thing from the boy in the match or the boy in the bath. So, oh, I, I guess it is. It is all connected. Though technically dead, do weakly breathe through the holes in their necks. They have no head. Their hearts have also been observed they have no head. Convulsing at seemingly random intervals. These beings are identical in appearance to one no head from physical dimensions, which can vary severely between each corpse. Wait, what? The head was sub people dwelling in the between each corpse. They are identical in appearance to one another aside from physical dimensions, which can vary severely between each Okay, so they're they're technically dead, but not really. And they live in other dimensions. The head was sub people dwelling in this pocket reality have been observed changing their behavior when humans have physically interacted with them and apparently gain a level of awareness and vitality when such events occur. I feel like I feel like the guy who wrote this just like took a bunch of concepts from like SCP and like I don't know, back rooms and like a bunch of other stuff and took a lot of like science buzzwords and put it all together into sounding like <laughs> It's just sounding realistic. And then it, he just sort of ran with it. But because, like, it's so out there, the visuals and the descriptions are so out there, it just took off from here. There are approximately 2,393 living humans residing in this reality, all from parallel Earth. Parallel... Par parallel Earth. Parallel... Parallel Earth. This, this guy really just... This guy really just wrote down whatever came to head, like, inside his mind, like, onto a script, and then he just drew it out. He just animated it all out. I respect it. <laughs> I, re I respect it. It's like, stream of consciousness script, basically. Hi, Ikram. Thanks for fucking in. resident recounts waking up in the headless microcosm after falling asleep under strange circumstances back in their own realities. No one back in their own parallel Hold on. I, I need- I need to- I, I actually am so lost. Parallel Earth. 
parallel earth in the reality okay so they're in the reality with the scp 096 like budget scp 096 guys and they live in this reality i see back in their own realities no one back in their own parallel homes remembers their faces or identities which leads to the belief that this place anti anti real anti reality so they can't remember anything about themselves they only know that they exist hope the stream has been nice yeah we uh we managed to kill kevin spacey uh we saw a video game about jesus and now we're learning about forbidden knowledge so it's been going places reality a waste compartment of the universe used for aspects of reality that are useless or harmful to exist. a waste compartment what hold on anti-reality is a waste compartment of, for the universe used for aspects of reality that are useless or harmful to exist total. okay i see so they basically live like in the recycle bin of reality all the humans all the humans that live here they're basically living next to like things that would probably break reality like our reality but existence puts them here or the universe puts them there so that it doesn't like you know affect anyone in our like dimension are you still following because i'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going with it at this point. Harmful to existential fabric. The humans that live in the headless macrocosm are assumed to be taking shelter in abandoned structures and banding together to... Oh, hey, it's like a... That's nice. Times. Fun fact. The climate in this reality is often below freezing. What the hell? How are they surviving then? Clothes? Or I guess maybe in the alternate reality there might be buildings and stuff. Fun fact. Humans have coined multiple terms and nicknames for these headless corpses. Stumpies. Stumpies. Cranes. Stumpies. Oh, God. Reality, an incident took place which created a temporary tear between the two. A man residing in the headless macrocosm was walking through a field with a small Wait, hold on. in between the two. Despite this subreality being detached from main reality, an incident which created a temporary tear between the two. So, something happened in this alternate reality, which caused it to affect our reality, I guess. A man residing in the headless macrocosm was walking through a field with a small house in the center. Upon reaching the house, the man unintentionally brushed up against one of the breathing bodies. This body, just oh. before motionless aside oh. from the labored convulsions, sprang to life and removed the head of the oh, man. <laughs> it's like SCP, it's like the other SCP, it's like the, uh... The, the the what's it called the, the statue scp at that point except instead of breaking his neck they just removed it entirely he just he, he just plucked his head out of his uh, out of his own body and it then proceeded to attach a severed head to the stump of its own neck the man's name was my oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh okay i was getting too comfy <laughs> i was actually so invested into this as a documentary like like a pseudo documentary. I forgot that we're actually watching a horror series. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Let's see if there's anything that is happening here. Uh, that is Mr. Tallman. The man's name was Michael Tedford. Searching for compatibilities. Relocating. Okay. So. I have a feeling what happened here was that maybe the uh the headless guy stole like his existence and tried to make it his own but obviously like you can't really do that that's not, like that's like impossible he tried to do like pull off an impossible move like he tried to steal like what is basically essentially what made up michael tedford whatever his name was so now reality is like trying to Remove the existence of Michael Tedford, possibly. The face you are looking for does not exist. <laughs> well, there you go, see. After the corpse had placed Michael's head there... Yeah, reality just can't comprehend the fact that, like, Michael is now this being that should not exist within any reality, it feels like. Even the video is kind of, like, wicking out. When does this series take place? 
a family call to the authorities, described an impossibly tall naked figure appearing in their backyard. The presence of this oddity was highly distressing to the family, and they remained inside their home until... Okay, okay, I see, I see. So, the, the head of that, like, alternate Earth, parallel Earth, combined with this entity, and it caused the entity to appear into, like, our reality for a second. was resolved. The following photograph depicts this figure they spoke of. Michael Tedford... <laughs> Like they got me again for some reason, but I like the, uh, I like the uh, the fact that's so corrupt, that like even just mentioning his name just causes like all this dimensional tearing, including inside the video. Oh shit! Oh my God, Jesus Christ! What was that? Well, it became realistic. Okay, that's what I thought. Scorpius is trying to become Tedford by leeching off his existence. So they don't technically exist in our reality, but they're trying to exist. They didn't just take his head; they took like what he was. These grieving bodies appear to be in a constant state of yearning to reconnect with the roots of reality again, as they have been taken a hold of by a dangerous and contagious... Oh, I see. So, they themselves are, like, infected by this, whatever the fuck it is, disease that, like, causes them to, like, not exist in our reality. And they want to be back in our reality. But they're, they themselves are not the anomaly. It's them being afflicted by this disease that causes it. Jeez. This disease appears to be non-existence itself. It can affect anyone on Earth at any time, and once it takes hold, the headless macrocosm beams you out of residence within its endless meadows. Wait. They exist- the disease appears to be non-existence. So, if you basically get infected with non-existence, you- you get, like, spirited away to the headless macrocosm, full of other humans that were, like, taken away, you lose your identity, but if you accidentally bump into, like, these- these like headless corpses you die well you don't even die you just get erased from existence they steal your being and they try to like you know exist in our reality again that's pretty cool i like that type of i like that lore with fellow patients but don't worry it's a rare diagnosis another fun fact occasionally crude man made structures will form seemingly out of nowhere in order to correspond with the structures on parallel what the what <laughs> That, this doesn't seem like a fun fact. As mentioned earlier, the headless macrocosm itself functions like Holy a shit. Tract of the universe. And these... The headless macrocosm itself functions like a digestive tract of the universe. And these structures may be antibodies and attempting to fight off the virus of non existence Oh. So they're like a good thing. If you see something that looks very out of place and looks like it doesn't it shouldn't exist in reality, that's a good thing. That means that you are likely not to be spirited away into the alternate Earth, where you can get your head ripped off and not exist. These structures made the antibodies attempting to fight off the virus of non-existence. Now then, check your head. Screw check your head. Because you might want to hang on tight to it. Look, it's a smiley face. There's <laughs> a smiley. It's still so whimsical. What the fuck? Obelisks of Enlightenment, Illustratio Geometrica. What was that? What's the? Classification? Enigmatic divinity. The obelisks of enlightenment are collective of monolithic beings that are currently residing in... That's a, there's a person inside the obelisk. Uh, there's... Is that... Is that Dr. Nowhere? ...remote locations across the world. Also known as the Fathers of True North, they appear in groups of 1 to 8 and stand anywhere from 10 to 150. Oh, the music's getting weird again. ...is levitating just barely above the ground and facing geodetic north. Though most of them reside in remote fields and deserts, they have also been found floating above the ocean within the vicinity of the... Wait, is it kind of low? Hold on. It's a bit low, isn't it? I'll turn up a bit. They are moving just ever so slightly and progress approximately two inches forward a year. Those like moon rocks. They're like moon rocks. Are lightened in the infinitely vast secrets of the universe and they're constantly vocalizing the excess information as a means of waste to counteract the overwhelming intake of knowledge. Oh, <laughs> so they have so much knowledge that they're trying to spew out their information so they can like, you know, 
they can just uh, cope with the fact that they have infinite knowledge. Because I guess if they stop, then they, I don't know, something bad might happen to them. So they, they, they like, that's the way of, like, expelling it. Though currently enclosed and monitored by government entities, many people have wandered into these locations prior claiming to be following the sound of angelic singing. Angelic this singing? emanating from these obelisks induces a massive increase in general intelligence in subjects listening. Folklore often refers to the frequency as the song of the divine heart. I wonder if this song that's like playing right now counts as an angelic song or a song of divine contour. It turns out it's just like a fucking reverse song of like some popular pop song. Never gonna give you up but in reverse. Wouldn't that shit be like very obvious to see? If you saw some like big obelisk with some squiggly hands reaching all the way to the oblivion in the sky, wouldn't that be very noticeable from a distance? Water. Fun fact. These organs are confirmed to be those of the humans and other biological matter oh, that were absorbed after life. This isn't fun. This is not a fun fact. Upon perceiving the words spoken by the obelisks or entering into close proximity with them, the human brain either spontaneously expands... <laughs> Your mind just gets blown. ...the to comprehend the sacred information. Talk about the... Oh, you become, you become enlightened. So there's like a 50-50 chance. Well, I don't know if it's 50-50, but... There's a chance that either you just die instantly... Or you become the smartest person ever. Which honestly is a win-win in my book. Whenever a subject is able to comprehend this knowledge, they are biologically absorbed into the obelisk oh. becoming all Okay, never mind, okay, never mind, never mind. It's it's not it's not a win-win. If you get absorbed into the obelisk, that does not seem that does not seem like it would be a good thing. I don't know. Okay, look. I, I I would take being the smartest person in existence. I would I would take like my mind being blown away, attempting to do that. I don't know how I feel being like you know absorbed into an obelisk for eternity and sh like shitting out information after knowing infinite knowledge. That doesn't seem like a very fun existence. Here's in the fabric of reality akin to black holes. Many speculate that these rifts were opened by ancient giants who were dissatisfied with a lack of Earth's knowledge. Very nice hieroglyphics. Have been found underground adjacent to obelisk sites, further supporting this idea. When the obelisks made their debut on Earth, they aided in the construction of the pyramids of Giza by bestowing digestible levels of sacred knowledge onto Egyptian pharaoh Khufu after. <laughs> They're saying that the reason the Egyptians were able to build the pyramids was because they were. they enlightened the Egyptian pharaoh. Nice. It was lured into the desert by their beckoning cords. This knowledge they really like trying. They really like trying to tie in like historical events into like their series as to like, oh, the reason why this historical event happened is because actually the boiled one wanted it to be so. Oh, the reason why there were pyramids, uh, the obelisks of infinite knowledge granted this knowledge to people. Why would they? Why would they give him infinite knowledge? Wait, why would they? Hold on. Further supporting this idea, when the obelisks made their debut on Earth, they aided, they aided in the construction of the pyramids of Giza by bestowing gestures. But why would they do that? I thought their goal. I thought their goal was to either like shit out knowledge because they have too much, or to like absorb people into like their obelisk. Why would they purposely give knowledge away to like humans? For building these grand tombs, and they were made into the shapes of pyramids. May not be, no, he might not be entirely time. honest. All in all, these obelisks. He's trying to make it seem very, very, very whimsical, which I mean, it's not. Th this shit can kill you, <laughs> or worse. Actually, a lot worse. It may seem malevolent, but it's important to remember that no physical pain could ever outweigh the <laughs> Look how happy he is. He's pogging. Oh, he's painful. Oh, he's in pain. Okay, so no matter no matter how much it can kill you, it is not as painful as literally knowing everything in the universe. Now, looks like our time here may be almost up. No, Bonzi buddy. It's time for it, I can't I can't listen dude, I can't. I, I just hear Bonzi buddy. <laughs> This is Silvus. 
Hi, Philbus. Where Philbus comes from or why he is here, but there he looks so happy. Of people who, after consuming media depicting Philbus, has felt the overwhelming compulsion to practice Philbism. Philbism is a political and somewhat religious ideology. This is just, this is just 4chan. It, this is just a shit post from 4chan. He looks good, huh? Huge improvement from the last, I think. In Philbus, I, is this, is this, just, this is just. This is literally just a po like a shit post from 4chan. This is a green text post. Hi, Seven. Did they, did he just get this idea from like a random shit post from 4chan or something? It is not clear what this sacrifice is or what it refers to. Attributes and practices of Philbism include learning to build chairs, learning to properly digest chairs. You, you just become obsessed with chairs. Chair consumption on obscure internet forum. Right, I get you. When you talk about softening, are you using any chemicals or do you have... Have you been trying to stick with any natural methods? Mostly natural so far, but I've heard about chemicals that can soften wood without compromising its structure too much. I'm not sure where to start. Any, though, any tips? Well, there are, any, there are a few roads you can go. Sodium hydroxide is one option. It's pretty strong as a wood softener. You have to be careful with it, though, because it can weaken the wood too much if you're not precise with it. Sodium hydroxide, got it. How do you apply that? Do I need to dilute it? Yes, definitely dilute it. A low concentration can soften the wood without breaking it down completely. You soak the wood. So you soak the parts of the chair if you want to soften in solution. You start with a 5% solution. Adjust there based on how the wood reacts. Hope this helps in Philbus. Why are you softening wood? Wh why? For what reason would you want to soften wood? Praising the fictional political candidate known as Philbus. P political candidate. All right, I know who I'm voting. I know who I'm voting for for this, for this, uh, for this uh, year. Philbus has my vote. Just eat your chair to get started. Eat your chair. Eat your chair. So once you mention Philbus, it becomes the media itself becomes an advertisement for Philbus. By the way, this stream is sponsored by Philbus. Hope you guys know this. You guys don't have to buy anything, but please eat your chair. It's very important that you guys eat your chair right now. You got. You must eat your chair right now. How to avoid this? Sorry, all Philbists will deny the existence of Philbism when directly questioned about it. Did I mention it's very important to eat your chair? Because you have to eat your chair right now. This video was not in any way sponsored by Philbism. This is for educational purposes only. Philbism does not even exist. <laughs> Philbism. <laughs> you have to set up for Philbism certification here. You consume the body of Philbus today. Eat your. <laughs> this, this is just a sh. He, he turned analog horror into a, a fucking into a fucking shit post. Nice. Unsafe for viral material detected. Thanks, Bonzi buddy. All right, guys, close your eyes. Close all of your eyes. Close, uh, you, your eyes better be closed. This is some next level ASMR. Isn't this like. Is this really much just like that, uh, the xylophone chord or whatever? So this is what ASMR will sound like in like 20, 30 years from now. We did it. Thanks, Dr. Nowhere. They still even have the laugh track. Goodbye, we love you. Aww. <laughs> well, that was Dr. Nowhere. And that was the Boiled One Phenomenon. That was pretty cool. I liked it. It was... 
absolutely surreal as fuck. And I have never seen anything like, uh, like I've never seen anything like it at all. It feels like nowadays a lot of analog horror like just follows like a certain like formula. Like it's it becomes very, very weird. Or no no. It starts off like a normal like VHS style like series and it becomes weirder and weirder as the video progresses, and then you get like weird VHS deformed face at the very end. That's the jump scare. And then it like just ends. But here, you know, you get the weird deformed face from the start. And he's very friendly. He just wants to be your friend. Come on, you guys don't want you guys don't want to hang out with a boiled one? Well, that's not up to you because he'll visit you other way by the time the stream is over when you guys go to bed. Also, make sure you make your chair, it's very important. Alright, I think that'll do it for tonight. Why is my screen so weird? Hold on. Has it always been this off? Oh shit. Well that's gonna be kind of annoying. <laughs> Whoops! Oh well. The boiled one plush is already. I don't even remember. I don't even remember buying it. I would actually buy that. Hold on. I have to look into buying that. That is actually pretty cute. I do have a lot of like plushes at home from like anime, but an analog horror plush. That would be a new one. I can have him sit that into my bed, and he can like watch over me for like any potential sleep demons. All right, updated the re-message. Call of Raid Advanced Boiled Face. <laughs> Jesus Christ, people will think that I'm actually insane. Honestly, they're not wrong. I don't know what the fuck happened in the last hour or so, and I don't think I can comprehend what happened in the last hour or so. Yeah, I think that'll do it for tonight. I had a lot of fun. I got to kill Kevin Spacey. I got to listen to the words of Jesus Christ. And then I got to... uh eat a chair and i think that's gonna be the highlight of tonight is literally eating a chair can i chop on your spine no you can only chop on a chair sorry gumpai welcome in or i guess see you around <laughs> uh let's see who's on right now mm. let me go over here real quick There we go. What the hell? Why are you? Get out of here. You! Get out of here. There's only room for one of me here, and it's not you. Jesus Christ. All right. Now then, let's go see who is on it. Oh, is that spin? The spin's not going? Spin works for me. I don't know it's not working for you. Works on my computer. Works on, works on my machine. All right. Let me see who is on right now. Twitch sucks. <laughs> it's not Twitch's fault. You just need to refresh your page, you know? Hmm. Who is on? Okay, you know what? We could raid into... Actually, it's Hora. Hora just came back from a hiatus, I believe. I believe they are doing art right now. All right, you know what? Let's go say hi to Hora. Hora is recently a new and upcoming VTuber. Uh, they do some really cool art. They took a break for a little bit, but they came back. And I think they've got a pretty good vibe. And it looks like they're currently doing game. Oh, they're doing game development stuff. Interesting. Okay, sure. Why not? We'll say hi to them. Let me set this up. There we go. Stop bopping your head so hard, you'll get a concussion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just vibing too hard. What can I tell What can I say? All right. I'm going to get some rest. You guys take care. Drink plenty of water. Uh, the rain message? Yes, the rain message will literally be... <laughs> sure, this. It's in it's so unhinged. What is wrong with me? Barrel, was it 5 a.m.? Because I've lost control of my life. If you guys haven't already, feel free to follow me here on Twitch and on Twitter. It really helps me out. Also, thanks for the save. I will save this stream. It'll be a very important stream for me. Thanks for clocking out too, Feth. Yeah, please feel free to follow me here on Twitch and Twitter. Also, if you guys ever missed a stream, we also have it on YouTube. I'll upload all VOD archives. I'm a little bit behind, but don't worry, I'm catching up slowly. Mm, what else? Oh, Discord. If you guys want to join Discord too, feel free to do so, because I will hold 
all announcements regarding events and 2.0 stuff and anything else on there. Also, people like posting food on there and flexing that they can cook because I can't cook and I'm very sad about that. Alright, you guys take care. I'll see you on the next one. Good night.